Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly video. So this time around, I thought I would pay some attention to the Apple Pencil first generation. So I have the first generation Apple Pencil because my current iPad, which is the iPad Air 3, is not compatible um, with the second generation Apple Pencil. Uh, so you will find that the Apple Pencil 2 is only available with iPad Pro models. But regardless of this, I have to say that I use the tool a lot. I use it for take taking handwritten notes at work, I use it for creating my game art, and I use it for touching up photos in Lightroom. And it's also really, really fun to just pick up the iPad, pick up the Apple Pencil and have a bit of a sketch around and procreate sometimes when I'm bored. So that's always really cool. Um, the construction of the pencil is pretty simple. It's basically a plastic tube, really, really pencil-like uh, or pen-like. Um, it has a removable cap at the top and this is used for for charging it also has interchangeable tips at the bottom so these tips are made of a soft plastic um, and as they interact with the screen a lot some of them would wear down over time depending on how aggressive you are um, but all this aside you do get spare tips in the box um, it was a bit of a controversial move when Apple first unveiled the Apple Pencil because if some of you remember, Steve Jobs famously once said, Who wants a stylus? However, with Microsoft doing wonders with their styluses, their pens, I think they're called, um, and Google also incorporating styluses into a lot of their hardware, Apple started pitching this to a lot of the creatives out there and um, this kind of opened up another avenue for the iPad. Um, so first we had the Apple Pencil come out, I remember a really nice uh, demonstration with Adobe using the Apple Pencil um, and it appears to have done really well. So the main apps that I use with the Apple Pencil are Procreate for drawing, Sprite something for pixel art, Notability for taking, taking notes at work and Lightroom for photo editing. And it's really, really handy in Lightroom, actually. You can specifically highlight certain areas of your photo and then you can adjust them individually, which is really, really fun. Um, I've also noticed that the Apple Pencil is really handy at no navigating some apps such as LumaFusion. So in LumaFusion, you have timelines. And some of these timelines, sometimes to stretch them out, your fingers can be... Um, a little bit too large but using the Apple Pencil with that fine tip um, it can really help significantly. You will notice that the pressure sensitivity is amazing with the Apple Pencil because what you can see underneath the tip here is there's this metal object that sticks out which no doubt contains touch sensors. Also compatible with Apple products that have sensors embedded in the displays um, that allow the displays for the Apple Pencil to work. So the only thing I really, really don't like about the Apple Pencil is the charging. The battery life itself is really good. On average, I probably recharge this once, maybe twice a week, depending on use. But it's often around that and it doesn't take long to charge at all. And it needs to be reminded that I use this pencil heavily. So as you can see from the first generation with charging, it has disaster written all over it. So you have to plug it into the bottom here. Um, and it just doesn't look right. Um, for a company like Apple that's so well highly regarded in design and aesthetics and development, this kind of looks so sketchy. So I really don't know what they were thinking. But regardless of this, you do get this tiny little adapter in the box that you can use with a regular lightning cable. Um, I was also asked with regards to power, um, do you notice the Apple Pencil drain any of the iPad's battery when you're, when you're charging it? And the answer is simply no. Um, because the battery in the Apple Pencil is so small, you don't notice any drain from the iPad going to the pencil itself, just because it's so small and it doesn't consume much power, or at least I don't notice it. So summing up, is the product worth buying? I honestly think, I honestly thought at first it would be a bit of a gimmick, but like I've said in previous videos, as the software and the apps have kind of caught up and developed a lot with the Apple Pencil, it's certainly improved in functionality. Um, so I would suggest that if you love drawing, if you like note taking the old fashioned way and you have an iPad that supports it, I would say, sure, maybe go ahead and buy it. But is it 100% essential? Not really. So that's a pretty quick flyover for the Apple Pencil. Let me know your thoughts and if you actually use one. If so, what apps do you use the most? Because there's so many out there these days. As always, guys, I would appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up if you liked it. 
Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next week with a new one.